For me, I think I approach editing kind of like sculpture in a way. It's like you whittle something down and then you build it up and then you whittle, you know, so you, for me, being able to actually physically move things around feels a lot like working with my hands more than having a mouse and sitting in front of a giant screen. You know, most of the time with documentaries, maybe you don't know what the story is until you're looking at the footage and then things start to stand out. That's part of the beauty of it is being able to mold something out of a, ton, a pile of footage that you don't know if there's going to be something in it or not. And then I can remember there was like one version finally where it just kind of clicked. Patsy was about to turn 90 and she is the spunkiest 90 year old I've ever met. She's always still learning and experiencing things. And at the same time, she's seeing her limitations physically and what's safe and not living by herself. While we're seeing Patsy make these decisions, we're also seeing her friend coming to the end of her life. And partly it's a, for me a lesson about what life and joy there is as you're growing older, even though you have some limitations. And then also being able to have really straightforward conversations with your family about the decisions you're making and about death and about where you are emotionally and physically. I think it's something that we don't um, talk about enough. So None of us is going to live long. I mean, I if, don't know. Some <laughs> people are living to be a hundred. I do, but then it's I, a whole 10 years. There are measures. There's measures. <laughs> I started the edit when I was in Hawaii, which, you know, for me, that was great because it's, it's easy, compact, and I could sit on the porch and edit and move around a lot. You know, I was at a table and then I was standing up at a counter and I was sitting on a couch, which for me, because I'm a, a physical person, it was nice to be able to be mobile, literally mobile while I was editing. All of the footage that pretty much I watched twice before I even start doing anything. So I'll usually start with interviews, watch all the interviews, take notes, bold things that stand out to me so that I can kind of skim through notes and know, okay, that's happening there. Um, and then because I start with the interviews, when I watch the um, Verite footage, I know I start to get an idea of what the story might be. So then a second round of watching, what I'll usually do is make selects from interviews and from uh, the Verite footage and, and start making projects or timelines for each potential scene and each interview. In the beginning, we had a very clear-ish direction, which was Patsy was a theater actress. Amy was taking the interviews and creating monologues for her mom to then perform. And then at some point with feedback, we realized that those monologues were kind of taking people out of the intimacy of being with Patsy and, and her friend Carol, who's quite a bit in the film. Because I'm a little bit thorough, it means that I can go back to those original pro You know, sometimes I start those timelines, those projects were, and then I get to the end and I'm like, why did I spend so much time doing that? Like, it seems like a lot of time, but it's actually, you really know the footage then. And then I can go back when something isn't working and look at something differently that, that had sort of like gotten lost the first time around. And even Amy found some footage towards the very end that I hadn't even seen. And it, to it like, we had this sort of loose dangling end and that footage that she found, like, just made everything work and I don't know what I would have done with that footage if I would have seen it earlier <laughs> but in the end it was magic you know <laughs> well we did use multicam for one scene because I like to 
you know, cut things and move them around. It's very different in multicam. Um, but then Amy and I ended up working together and just, it became really fluid and, and, and we could make decisions together about which camera was, was best delivering what, the emotion that we wanted to capture. And, you know, it was challenging at first because it was the first time I'd used Luma. There were things that I was used to being able to do that I, it took a while to, for me to figure out how to do. But then, I don't know, it also feels pretty natural. And, and um, once I got going, I was good. You know, I think, I think if you are passionate about something, if you have an idea, it, it just is a matter of putting one foot in front of the other.